So, good afternoon. I think you have heard a lot about the new trifocal lens now. I don't want to repeat everything again and again, so I will try to find some different aspects and I will try to go more into detail in those aspects as compared to the platform of the trifocal lens itself. I have implanted 10 lenses in five patients initially and I'm definitely going to show you our first results. I will speak about the material, the design, I will show you comparative data and my first results. The material. It's about 18 years when we first checked this ray acryl material. We did a lot of studies comparing different IOL materials in different conditions. And ray acryl was the hydrophilic material we tested. It's a 26% hydro uh, water content material. And we, you see here these results we published, as I mentioned, in the year 2002. So quite a long time ago with the same material. And we found that the UVI, the, U, uh, the UL biocompatibility was definitely less as, com uh, was definitely higher and superb to the materials of silicone or hydrophobic material, acrylic. So for that reason, in special cases, especially for PEX eyes, for instance, or for uveitis eyes, it is, abs it is absolutely s s meaningful to use a hydrophilic material. So it has a superb UVL biocompatibility. Coming to the design as next step, we also compared the capsular biocompatibility. This was a study in about the same time of period and at that time we compared the C-flex design, you see the edge of the C-flex, it's also at the haptic optic junction a sharp edge. As the prior design, the center flex, which was uh, produced before, they had a sharp edge but it was not at the optic haptic junction and we could show that there was a significant reduction in PCO rates with this Amon Apple enhanced square edge, with this square edge going 360 degrees around the lens. So, the new platform, the Ray 1 lens, is very similar to the C-Flex lens. The difference is it has a larger optic, it has 6 millimeters as compared to 5.75, and a smaller optic than the sub Superflex lens, which was which, which had 6.25 mm, uh, millimeters in diameter. You have seen this already. I want to go over that quickly because you have seen it. And also, an, a nice tool is the implantation of this lens. Because it's a preloaded lens, the nurses love it. Because in our operation theater, the nurses usually also fold the other lenses. And when they have a preloaded lens, they are quite happy because it goes straight forward and it's quite easy to, to implant and, and to, to prepare that lens in, in, in advance. So coming to the comparative technical data. You know, there are so many different lenses on the market. There are refractive lenses. You see the, 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 uh, the former M-Flex lens on the right side. There are diffractive, trifocal, bifocal, so different lenses. There are aspheric lenses, asymmetric lenses. So it's a total different of, of options you find. There are additive lenses which also can provide a multifocality, which is also an interesting concept, which might be a big thing in the future, hopefully. And the problem is that all these lenses, they split light, so you lose light. And it's a main thing that when you see on these MTF curves that a monofocal lens, you see that in the gray area, gets much more light to the retina as compared to all the other kind of lenses, even if it's a multifocal lens, trifocal or bifocal, or if it is an Adolf lens, which in some cases is also a diffractive lens, or if you are talking about a stenopaque whole lens, they also lose light at the retina. So it's a main thing that you get as much light to the retina as possible. So you have here about the concept of this lens. It on only has 16 diffractive rings uh, and it should help to get as much light into the light as possible, into the eye as possible. You see here 11% it is stated by the company. 
So in comparison, you have seen this slide already from the design aspect here. It's a, it's a real big difference between these lenses. Three of them are hydrophilic and one of them, the Alcon lens, is hydrophobic. There's a plate lens in the size and it's a, a similar haptic design in the uh, physio lens. From the design here and the loading system and implantation aspect, I think it's preferable to have a design like this well-known design of the Rayner lens, in my opinion. Here you see the, uh, the target charts, which, which uh, has been done in in vitro measurements. And now I would just like to present you my 10 first cases, five patients. This is the aspect after one week. They all went fine. It's easy to implant the center well. It's a well-known platform, yeah? Uh, and here you see a video. You should to have tried to get a five millimeter rexis and then an implantation is straightforward. You have a very narrow nozzle with 1.6 millimeters at the, at the tip. So in that case, I have an opening of about 2.4 millimeters and there the injection is straightforward. Sometimes you may rotate the injector a little bit that you have a smooth and parallel implantation and that's it. I routinely aspirate the viscoelastic from behind first that they have a pillow in front at the endothelial side and after aspirating the, lens, the, the viscoelastic from the posterior part of the, of the capsular bag, I uh, remove the viscoelastic from the anterior side. Okay, so the visual results as next, okay. Uh, favorable visual results, maybe some biometrical adjustments should be done in the future to individualize the A constant maybe, but the, the, the results were very favorable. Here you see the defocus curve, it's very similar to our pre-talks. Uh, and finally, I just want to show you the results. We also compared a trifocal, the size lens with the symphony lens, and in visual acuity, we had very similar results with the Rayner trifocal lens. Here you see the binocular defocus curve. It's very similar to the size results. And in the near, it is better than the symphony, definitely. You would expect that, okay? So finally, I can say that patient satisfaction was very high. All patients were very satisfied with their lens, with this lens and their vision in all the three distances. So in conclusion, I can say we have excellent visual acuity across all the distances, no surgical or post-op complications. The IOL platform, in my eyes, is superior to the plate design IOLs and it's the first fully preloaded trifocal IOL. Thank you very much.